Okay. Uh, Wall Street Journal. Uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, uh, last July you said uh, after Donald Trump questioned uh, Article 5, you said solidarity among allies is a key value for NATO, good for European security, good for U.S. security. We defend one another. Are you disappointed that Donald Trump did not explicitly affirm U.S. support for Article 5, did not say that there is an unwavering U.S. commitment to defend all allies no matter what? President Donald Trump dedicated a 9-11 and Article 5 memorial. And just by doing that, he sent a strong uh, signal. Second, he has strongly committed uh, and strongly stated his commitment and the commitment of the United States to NATO, to our uh, collective security, uh, to our collective defense and to the security guarantees. He has done so in meetings with me, but he also expressed, for instance, his commitment when we met in Washington uh, some weeks ago. So we have had a clear message from the US administration, uh, uh, from the president, from the vice president when he was in Brussels, from, the, from Secretary Tillerson, from Secretary Mattis, that the United States is committed to NATO, and it's not, it's not possible to be committed to NATO without being committed to Article 5 and our, our collective defense clause, because NATO is about collective defense and the security guarantees. But perhaps even more important than the words and the statements is what we see that is taking place on the ground. So the US commitment to Mr. Secretary General, was there any sense of unease in the room amongst leaders at the force of Donald Trump's rebuke to them over their this defense expenditure, particularly after they had agreed that NATO as NATO would be joining the coalition against ISIS? Thank you. Well, we have heard President Trump before being very blunt on the message about fair burden sharing. 
And I think all allies uh, are aware of the importance uh, of burden sharing uh, in the alliance. And uh, we have to remember that fair burden sharing was something we addressed at our summit in 2014. Uh, and uh, several NATO allies also expressed that we have to invest in defense not just to please the United States, but we have to invest in European defense uh, because it is in our own interest to do so. And therefore, we all welcome the fact that we are now moving in the right uh, direction. Uh, the United States is committed to NATO, is to, committed uh, to collective defense, uh, and we see that not only in words, but also in deeds. The US is now increasing its military presence in Europe with a new armored uh, uh, brigade, with more exercises, with more uh, infrastructure, with more prepositioned equipment and supplies. So we see it really on the ground in Europe, the commitment of the United States uh, to NATO and to our collective defense. But at the same time, uh, the United States, of course, expects that uh, all allies contribute, and that's exactly what we decided in 2014, and we have started to move in the right direction. We'll go to the fourth row here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, President Trump, when addressing uh, the burden sharing on the outside, he said that he talked about the chronic underpayment from NATO member states, and he also said that many of these nations of massive amounts of money from past years are not paying in those past years. Is that a reasonable claim for the other NATO members? Would that be payable bills in the futures? And do you agree uh, on this analysis about the, the, the due payments from the past? What we are talking about uh, is the implementation of the pledge we all made in 2014. And the language there is clear. Uh, we commit to stop the cuts gradually increase and then uh, move towards spending 2% uh, of GDP on uh, defense. And I know that President Trump uh, has been and still is very clear, blunt and plain uh, when he is conveying that message to European allies. That was what, and Canada, we saw that again today. But at the same time, I know that President Trump recognizes that European allies and Canada are really moving in the right direction. I remember he told the US Congress that the money is pouring in. So he is aware of that after years of decline, we are now starting to increase. We still have a long way to go. There is still a need uh, to continue to increase uh, defense spending. Uh, but that's exactly why we made the decisions we made today to develop a tool that uh, helps us uh, to deliver on the pledge we made, the national plans, which will provide more transparency, uh, reports on how different allies are implementing not only the spending pledge, but also the pledge we made on capabilities and contributions to uh, NATO operations and missions. So again, it is possible to have an ambitious message on defense spending, but at the same time, uh, having a positive message on uh, defense spending. And in one way, I think it's, uh, it's uh, what should I say, uh, not surprising that uh, President Trump has uh, a direct way to convey that message. 